Good morning to everybody. Good morning. And uh, welcome on this the last Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, hard to believe, but Advent begins next next Sunday. Um, I want to welcome back to our music director and uh, artist. We are glad to see you back exactly where you belong. <laughs> Um, I want to ask John Mayo first, our treasurer. He has an announcement he needs to make. Where did John go? Uh, so would somebody hold the chair? Would you hold the cross for him while John <laughs> makes the announcement? Come on up here, John, so that we'll be on the camera with you as well. Good morning. Good morning. This is... Uh, not, not only uh, the ending of uh, one season and the beginning of another, but it's also the season that uh, I make uh, requests for people to uh, look and look into their pocketbooks, I guess, and uh, fill out a pledge card. Pledge cards are similar to what we used before, and uh, it's important that I do that to do the budget, and it's also important because we report as pledging units. You didn't realize each and every one here is a unit. <laughs> so uh, that helps the, the greater church in, in, uh, in New York to determine you know, how many people are actually in the pews on Sunday. So the card is, is uh, very, very clear that you know, if you don't feel right now that you need, you, that you can pledge any, anything monetarily, you can still turn it in, mark that, uh, but still say, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm considering it. And that'll, that'll help me also that you say you, you consider it. So if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to ask me or anyone on Vestry. And uh, Sharon will have some cards like this in the back. Okay. Thank you. And um, we hope to have all the cards turned in by our annual meeting, which will be the third Sunday in Advent, uh, December 12th. I know that usually it's the second Sunday in Advent, but we had some key people with uh, con conflicts of being out of town. And so it'll be the third Sunday in Advent, December 12th. So you have, we'd like to have the cards turned in then so he can do the budget. The way this money is used is uh, for everything that happens from St. Luke's, whether that is as simple as being able to have the lights turn on so that we can uh, see what we're doing when we worship here, the heat, the, everything to do with the building, also everything to do with uh, any ministry that goes on both within the parish for its uh, own for each other, our pastoral ministries, as well as our outreach ministries into the community of, of which we have many. Um, and also for any clergy support. We, we receive a small amount every year from the diocese, which is basically covers our, what, what we pay to the diocese back. And so the ability of St. Luke's to do its ministry depends on people making contributions. And if you feel like you can pledge, then it allows us to make a budget so that we really know what money we have to work with as we plan ministry and plan how we, how we do the things that we do. So sometimes people don't understand that. They think that the diocese pays for us and this is just a little extra. But this is the foundation of who we are. So if you are able, uh, Please consider doing that, and you can take those cards home and then think about it, but they'll be out there every week in case you take one home and you lose it and you still want to do it. Um, also, at that annual meeting, um, Ron, in his report, will give us an update of where we are as we move into our new structure for the first of the year of how clergy support is provided. He'll talk more about that. And I will give uh, my final report that kind of sums up the three years of our work together to get to the point where we were able to decide uh, 
what would work for St. Luke's moving forward. So those two things will, will be said um, at that meeting. Um, and um, one of the most important things is we will elect the new members of the vestry. Um, the people who go off the vestry form a nominating committee and place some names in nomination, but vestry elections, um, anybody who is a, uh, a uh, confirmed communicant of St. Luke's or, a bab or, or listed as a baptized person and is a member of St. Luke's can run for, for vestry. Your membership does have to be here. So if, if you're like many people uh, who have dual memberships, like you, you know, some you, you attend two things, but your actual membership is someplace in another Episcopal church, then that do, that doesn't put you in that in that category. But everybody else, you can you can vote if you have uh, have act, told me that you are baptized and want to be a member of. St. Luke's, that counts, okay? Uh, the only time that I would have to take another step is if you are also a member of another Episcopal church and then we would have to ask for a letter of transfer. But if it's another denomination, that doesn't matter if you want to be considered a baptized member of St. Luke's. So um, I'll say more about that as, as we go on and, and, and announce probably next week who the nominees are from the from the best way. We still have a couple of things to tie up there from the, that. Um, I'm sorry, but I have a lot of announcements this morning. Um, with the Advent season starting next Sunday, we also will pick up with our Advent Zoom times. However, as we decided when we took a pause, these will be on the four Wednesdays of Advent. Uh, I have scheduled an email to go out wishing you happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it should go out Monday, the week uh, of Thanksgiving, which would be this coming Monday. It has a flyer attached that tells you more about that. So I invite you to take a look at that and consider how you want to participate in those Advent Wednesdays. Uh, the group times will be by Zoom. There will also be videos for you to look at at home prior to each Zoom, just short, short videos. Um, you know that when we came back in person, we set policies for how we would come back in person to stay safe during COVID. A part of that policy was that each month the vestry would re-examine certain aspects and see if we were ready to make a change. Um, in looking at that, we are ready to make two changes, okay? One change is that we've noticed people enjoy being around and talking afterwards and a lot of people are just kind of trying to gather in the north x a very small space so we're going to encourage you to spill over if you want to stay and talk to each other to kind of move over to the fellowship hall instead of instead of being in the north x or here we are not ready to open the kitchen yet for coffee or food because that would mean you'd have to take off your mask and we are not ready yet to take off masks. We, we will continue to use masks. The other thing, though, is we believe that it is safe to go back seeing our hymns with our masks on. Now, when I say with our masks on, I really don't mean guarding your chin. Okay? And I really don't mean letting your nose free. Because part of the problem, especially if we're singing, is that we don't even realize that we're spraying stuff out of our nose and our mouth. So with masks on means that while we're singing, you still wear your mask, covering your nose and covering your, your mouth. Okay? Um, we will start by just singing hymns. And today, uh, the hymns we'll sing will be a processional. Um, Candace, help me out. We'll sing a hymn at the offertory, I think. Is that right? Uh, yes. And, and going out. Uh -huh. We will have, still have an instrumental for communion. That's a little bit easier than trying to sing while you're coming up for communion. And we will not start singing the service music yet. We'll go back to singing Gloria and Sanctus probably in a few weeks. But, um, but we're going to just kind of... Ease back, ease back into this. So uh, that starts today, and Barbara has put the hymn numbers in the, in the bulletin so that we can find them. You see that the hymnals are in front of you. The red and black one is the Lift Every Voice and Sing, and that, our last hymn today comes from that one. The other two, the other one, the blue one, is uh, the uh, 1982 hymnal. Okay, so I will announce that since we have these things, since we have not been doing them for a while.
Uh, let's see if that was it. Except for letting Ron have his turn, I think that's it, Ron. This is easy. Blackout speaks, 6 o'clock, Tuesday evening. <clears throat> I don't really know exactly what we're going to be doing, but I think I'm going to be talking about the real Thanksgiving on Tuesday. Ah. The real Thanksgiving. So I fit in for that. If you like, I'll put the I'll announce the Zoom on the St. Luke's uh, website if you want to be involved in that. Should be interesting. Good. And that's really all I have, um, with the exception, I, I wanted to let you know that I'm going to be uh, feeding folks on Wednesday. If you don't know about that, Barbara, you're shaking your head up and down like you probably have the details on that, where that's going to happen. Um, I just remember you mentioning it, so I'm not invited that I... It, it, it is being organized by Dr. Vivian Schott, yes. and we are participating along with other organizations in the community. It takes place at the Senior Residence, which is a special building on... Tina, what's the name of the street that the residence... Five points, uh, is the the residence at Five Points. The Residence at Five Points is the name. And um, they, what, what time do they need to be there? They're serving 11 to 1. They're serving from 11 to 1. Okay. Basically, they've done the meals and everything. They're looking for volunteers to come just to help distribute. And as, as, as Dr. Vivian says, love on the people. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would bring a mask. I imagine that people will, will, uh, who are serving might be asked to wear masks. So you can do what they ask you to do when you, when you get there. Ten. I just want to say very quick, but this is going to be something very special for the community <coughs> because their community center has been closed since May, and they've not been able to have fellowship with one another since May. So this is a very important time for them. This and is share community time. And I, I will be unavailable that day, but Ron will be the person um, that's there officially for us. And so if you have any questions, on that day when you get there, just see Ron and he'll, I'm sure Dr. Vivian will tell you what to do. Um, uh, Tina, you have a little more information on exactly where it is? Like, well, I think the fire, the fire was previously Taylor. Unfortunately, I can't remember the street, but I tell you what, Ron, if you will uh, look all that up and draft an email, uh, and send it to Nancy. She will get that out Monday, and then everybody will have the address. Okay. So Barbara, I'll be calling you to okay. share my confusion, so that we can both be confused, and then we'll have Tina straighten it out. <laughs> well, or Tina, the, why don't, Tina, why don't you just get in touch with Barbara if that's what we need to yeah. do, and put all the information down there so that Barbara can. Uh, <laughs> Barbara can write the thing, and then Barbara, you can give it to Nancy to because she has the list. Yeah. So you three work it out, all right? <laughs> Ten. Twenty sixty one Bethel is the street address. Oh, Twenty sixty one cool. Bethel. Great. But let's still get a mailing out if the three yeah. of you would coordinate that among yourself. Please. Now I know where to go. All right. That's it. Okay. All right. Deep breath. Thank you. Thank you. And release. Breathe in as you let your body find that place of calm and stillness. Breathe out any cares and anxieties, letting them just be offered up to God. And once more, going a little deeper with your breath in. And just almost say, ah, or do say, ah, as you let it out. And in that place of stillness from which you pray and offer praise, let us listen to the prelude.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Glory to God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone know the Holy One. You alone know the Lord. You alone know the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be free and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from Daniel. As I watched thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne, his clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fierce with flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night vision, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was pre presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 93 responsibly at the aspirin. The Lord is king. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and heard in himself the strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot move. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up. O oh Lord, the waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their heavenly waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. Mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure. And holiness adorns your house, O oh Lord, forever and forevermore. A reading from Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is, who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kingdom of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will well. So it, it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy 
gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. In the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart be acceptable to the Lord. Christ is King. I'm going to say that right off the bat. Christ the King, Sunday. But that's not what I want to talk about. Well, it is kind of indirectly. You know how I am. And Gail, there's something I've been meaning to say to you, and I keep forgetting, and that's I really appreciate it. That moment we have here to get that deep breath and that centering to where we pray from, it's really important to me. It really is, because it really helps us pray. Thank you very much for that. And uh, thank you for uh, jogging my conscience the other night when we talked. People do that to you, you know, they, they jog your conscience. And uh, my conscience gets jogged by a lot of stuff. It really does. And uh, there's a problem there. See, the problem is that when my conscience gets jogged, well, I got to do something. And it may not be something fun. Most of the time it's not, but it's something that's got to be done. Last Thursday, I was invited to view a movie called The Wake. And it was about the Standing Rock Reservation and the demonstrations around the, the pipeline up there and what happened with it. And at the, at the end of the movie, people were, were responding. And I spoke up, which shouldn't surprise anybody. <laughs> I spoke up and I said, you know, I'm so tired. I'm 70 years old. And for a long time, since I was 38, I've been heavily involved in Indian traditions, in politics, in the terrible stories that you hear from time to time about things that happen on the reservation and things that happen off the reservation. And I told the folks, I said, you know, you folks are the choir. And tonight I'm going to sing to the choir. And I think I got the message. The message was that the people who need to be there to watch that movie are not there. We can't get their attention. For 25 years, I went to Sundance 
and pray for the world. <clears throat> Not just me. Hundreds of other people. 25 years. And I still help with it. I help at a distance because I'm too old to do what's required to send this anymore. And um, the tiredness comes from <clears throat> having to tell the story, whether I want to or not, about Indian country. That's what I do every Tuesday night, pretty much for a year now. <laughs> I teach people about Indian country. I want them to understand, and I make them inquire. Thank God that there's people who want to be in that choir. There's people who want to help Indian folks. And the pipeline was about the tribe up there wanting to preserve the water and the water flow of the Missouri River. Not for the, just for their own sake, but for the 11 million people who live along that river, whose lives are dependent on that river. Because the Army Corps of Engineers is going to build an oil line under the Missouri River. You know, where somebody sat and concluded that that was a good idea, I would have liked to have been in on that discussion. Because a lot of other Indian people were. And you know, Indian people were not initially involved in those discussions. Not till they began to demonstrate. Well, isn't that the way it is? But you know, I want to point out some things here. When any of people out on the reservation at Standing Rock demonstrate, the way that they went there to demonstrate was to pray. Indian people pray a lot. A good part of the time, that prayer is about peace, not violence. And yet, they were here with a barrage of rubber bullets and tear gas. And, and the people who were doing those things were standing on Turtle Mountain, a place where Indian folks bury their, their leaders, their spiritual leaders. And I know about those hilltops because I've been on those hilltops to bury people. Chiefs. And um, they desecrated that land. Even when they were told, they continued to desecrate that land. I'm afraid that these kinds of things happen more often than we know. Pontius Pilate, he was kind of a creep, you know. I studied up on him because he showed up strongly in the gospel. But he was a box, you know. I mean, really, the Jews could do anything they wanted. But putting Jesus to death was up to Pontius Pilate. And um, there are differing descriptions of Pontius Pilate that tend to apologize <coughs> for him. He washed his hands, after all, right? He did. He washed his hands of everything. Which just meant he didn't want to take responsibility for it. Well, it's not that easy. You know, somebody's got to take responsibility. And he had Jesus crucified. That's power. That's real power. And yet any time a minority group in this country goes up against the federal government that 
represents the majority, that different kind of relationship will always come to the forefront. Because people don't believe it's that bad. They don't want to know it's that bad. The folks running the show, they don't want to know. And it's like a bug in their ear. You know, it's this little tribe, these cute little Indians, you know, down on the reservation. You know, what are they really going to do? Start a war? No, probably not. Because they learned they can't win. But when it comes to spiritual things, sacred things, those things they want to keep, they want to preserve. The Army Corps engineers said, so what? And dug and plowed and dug and plowed anyway. And even when they started turning up artifacts, they just kept digging and plowing, digging and plowing, because they could. And they had all these security guys driving equipment that was from the first Iraq war to take on a bunch of Indians who were there armed with sage and smoke. <laughs> but isn't that the way that it is for us, for, for Indian people, for African American people, for people that are gay, for people that are different. Isn't that the way that it is? And how likely is the big boss how likely is the big boss to listen to what we say and decide in our favor? That's the world that we live in. And from time to time, I have to include that in my preaching because that's who I am. I'm an Indian person. And if somebody who is African American came to me and said, hey, you know, we got a civil rights issue here, I would respond. I would do the best that I could with the situation. I think all of you would. And yet there's a whole world of people out there who don't think there's any racism in this country. They don't see the sign that says, no dogs or Indians allowed in here. Those signs are still up in parts of this country. Only good Indians are dead Indian, right? That's what we learn. Now, having stuck that out there, and my obvious anger around it, that's how I keep my anger in check around these issues. Because I think in uh, most Indian people, there is there's that, there's that darkness and that sense of history that means they can't trust. And they avoid that. They stay away from that because they're taught by the elders. We need to live in peace and we need to teach people peace. And we need to teach people to pray for the world. Not just your busted toe, that's important. It's more important than your busted toe. But to pray, for the world. If we could really pray for the world in a true and honest and heartfelt fashion, I believe things would get better. I'm not so cynical yet that I've lost my belief in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, my Savior. I'm born again. I was born again in a Baptist church. And then something happened to me, and I kind of had that happen in an Episcopal church. It's a little more vague. <laughs> I mean, when you get born again in a Baptist church, you know you're being born again. <laughs> and uh, 
But I love that part of who I am. I love the part where I'm, I'm involved in the Episcopal Church and I become a deacon because I can say things that I need to say to people here and to people in other places. But don't doubt that Christ is the, is the King. He is, and He's going to come again. And then all these issues will be dealt with. But maybe we could get a head start on it. You know, I'd like to get a head start on it. You see, all that land that they plowed and dug, <coughs> all that land was Indian land. And it was given to them in perpetuity by treaties. Until the head of Ancho, the Pontius Pilate in the system, says, the heck with that, we don't gotta observe that. That's the way history has treated Indian people. But there's hope, and that hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he can teach love and fill us with love when nothing else can. And that's what we gotta have to get to these days. Because they might get worse before they get better. They might. I hope not. But God bless you. Thank you for listening to me. Amen. Amen. Please turn to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer and let us stand as we recite the Nicene Creed. <coughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God, God of the Father, God from God, Light to rise, true God, true God, we got my name, of one of my meetings with the Father, through whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are 4 and 6 on page 392 of the Book of Common Prayer. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in your daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Brian, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in the church. 
for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And pray for you, We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For all spies. For Brian, for Bishop William Sanders, Lord, let your loving kindness be upon us. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins. sins. No, 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 no. Things done and not done now. And so hold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet each other in the peace of the Lord, still from a dead Lord. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Uh, we have a hymn, right? Thank you. We have that hymn, 433. 433. <laughs>
Signature A, page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of our power and life, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is dying. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, is his sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. By your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our faith and bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But the thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven.